show. Folks, my next guest tonight introduced the world to the Lannisters, the Starks, and the Targaryens in his epic series, A Song of Ice and Fire. His new book is Fire and Blood. Please welcome to The Late Show, George R. R. Martin. <laughs> Nice to see you. It's nice to be here. I like your uh, I like your uh, purple turtle there. Oh, What's I, this little brooch here mean? I love turtles. I love to. That's how my my writing career began with uh, with turtles. I uh, I lived in Bayonne, New Jersey, in a federal housing project. Sure, right across the river here. We were we were not allowed to have dogs. We were not allowed to have cats. So the only pets I was allowed to have were turtles, little little dime store turtles that we bought sure. at Woolworths in the little round bowls and uh -huh. with the palm tree. On the little island with the That's water around Right, it. right. Yeah, and sure. I, I, could, I had a toy castle. I could fit two turtle bowls in the toy castle. So I had a number of turtles. But the thing is about those little dime store turtles is that they, they die very soon. <laughs> I fed them the turtle food and I thought I was doing everything right and, you know, in a few months they'd be dead. And I couldn't figure out why they were dying, but it certainly wasn't my fault. So I decided was it that they were, com they were competing <laughs> for the turtle throne. They were killing each other to determine who would, would be the, be king the, the turtle castle? king. Yes, in wow. the castle. So that was my first fantasy, Turtle Castle. It preceded Game of Thrones by many years. Wow. <laughs> uh, well, can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. You'll, you'll have to, I have to do Winds of Winter next. If I put Turtle Castle well, ahead, they're going to be gonna very mad at me. Well, they might kill you for this, too, because you got a new book, Fire and Blood, right here, <laughs> which we'll get to, we'll get to just in, in one moment. Okay, but I want to ask okay. you, as you know, uh, you, had, you had your turtles I that did. you were writing the stories for. Who were else uh, some of your fantasy and, and science fiction uh, heroes. Who were the people who influenced you that you were reading when you were a kid? Because I read a ton when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Well, there was... There was um, the first science fiction book I ever read was Have Space It Will Travel by Robert A. Heinlein. Of course, of course, of course yeah. Uh, amazing. Cat Who Walked Through Walls, stuff, all those juvenile series. The, yeah. Armor in the Sky. Citizen of the Galaxy, The Rolling Stones. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, all, all of Heinlein. Andre Norton was mm -hmm. also uh, very good. And, of course, in, in fantasy, uh, I started off with with Conan, Robert E. Howard, mm -hmm. the old Lancer editions, you know. I, mm -hmm. I think I was reading them when I was like did they have 12, uh, 13. Did they have like sexy ladies on the front and him, like the Frazetta images of Conan on the front? Yeah, definitely. Frazetta standing on a pile of, uh, you know, Conan standing on a pile of corpses. Mm -hmm. And Conan would always fight a giant snake and there would be a scantily clad dancing girl. And then I encountered Tolkien, who puzzled me at first because it was like a birthday party. And uh, that What do you mean? What do you mean? Like the when Fellowship of the Ring, it begins with a birthday party. A long-expected party, yeah. And there's no dancing girls or giant snakes. <laughs> no, I was you saying. don't know who's having sex with who in <laughs> no, that. No, no, I say, where? New elves come from someplace, but you can't figure out how they do it. So mm -hmm. at first, I wasn't really sure about Tolkien, but when I got into it, by the time we got to Rivendell and the Black Riders, and I, yeah. I was in love. And then when The Minds of Moria, I said, this is the best book ever written, uh, and this is magnificent. Here's so. the thing, is that I, my, the guy who first uh, gave me my copy of The Lord of the Rings, a guy named Keith Sargi, an old, old friend of mine, one of my oldest friends in the world, he sent me your books and said... I found it, because we're always looking for the next thing to obsess about in our lives. We're always looking for something that could stand up to, to that kind of love that you want to give a fantasy world. And your books are it. Um, what, what, what led you to write this, which takes place 300 years before the events of uh, Game of Thrones? Yes, before we came up with a title for this, we were calling it the GRM, the Grimmarillion. It was like my Cimmerillion. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, it's, it's like the, <laughs> it's the deep, deep source right. material. This is, not, this is not a traditional novel. It's a imaginary history. It's written uh, from the viewpoint of an archmaster at the Citadel, writing 300 years after the events and trying to go back and make sense of the early history of Targaryen kings. And, Is this uh, like the Mad King and the, the, the fall of the Tar Targaryen family? We, well, that will be the second half. This, I have to write a second this one. This is the first half? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this, 
This is 700 <laughs> pages long. Wait. There were a lot of kings. There were a lot of kings. <laughs> Does and this go back to uh, Valeria? Does this go back before the uh, fall? It, it of... starts with Aegon the Conqueror and his two sisters conquering sure. Aegon's conquest, and it goes up to the uh, regency of the boy king Aegon the Third. So there are lots of dragons and battles and betrayals and uh, Aren't good Aren't you kings, supposed to be finishing kings? the winds of winter this entire time? <laughs> Not to add to the chorus of what has taken so long, but this is a 700-page <laughs> detour. <laughs> When you're supposed to get to the thing, how did, how did you have time to do a 700-page book, two 700-page books? How did this come about? Well, I haven't written a second one yet, so <laughs> they'll have to wait for the second half. First, uh -huh. I have to finish Winds of Winter. Yep. And then... The second half of this? Well, maybe, or maybe Dream of Spring, or maybe more Dunkin' Egg stories. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to write, so I should actually get home and get to work, I guess. <laughs> Well, while I got you before I let you go, you're a Tolkien fan, I'm a Tolkien fan. Right. One, part of the uh, critiques of Tolkien is that there's no sex in Tolkien. As we were just talking before, who do you think's getting it on in The Lord of the Rings? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know where the elves, I mean, maybe the dwarves. We, we don't know what's happening we down in those mountains. Women. That's right. We never see right. any female dwarves, and there's a rumor that the female dwarves have beards, and that's how we can't tell them apart. And clearly, the orcs are being born out of mud, so... But they're uh... not. That's only in the movies. That's They're clearly mean. being bred by Saruman. But where are the female orcs? Where are the female orcs? Yeah. The orcettes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think there's, they're, 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 they're singing backup for Ray Charles with a name like that. <laughs> well, we uh, do have in, in Fire and Blood, uh, there's that, that, you know, it's written from a Archmaster going back to primary sources, and there's one particular incident where he he has to somewhat reluctantly consult a a book called A Caution for Young Girls, which is basically erotica from Westeros, uh, the accounts of a of a despoiled maiden, and there are many different versions that have been changed over the years. So that's one reason I've you know really diverged from Tolkien because there is no porn in Middle Earth. <laughs> You have to go to Valinor for that. That's, That's why they right. go on the ships to go over there. Yeah. Well, Fire and Blood is available now. George R. R. Martin, everybody. We'll be right back with Chef.